Hi guys, it's Charlie from Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Check out what has just arrived. It's a very popular printer from Anycubic. It's the Anycubic Photon S. Let's get it out of the box, let's set it up, and let's get it printing. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Some FET film, some instructions. That's good, quality control, it's passed. It's always good to see. Let's send some resin, that's kind. A power adapter, some tools, a screwdriver, that's the power cord. Some other tools, a mask, scraper for the vat, some gloves, it's always good. A little after sales service card, a USB to get the prints from the computer onto the printer. Here on the plastic. So it's very well packed, this foam protects it well. There you go. The first thing we notice is it has a plastic case. The other Photon, I've actually got one up here, came with a metal case. I don't mind the white plastic case, but I have to say that it just does seem a little bit more flimsy. I mean, we have to remember the price bracket that this printer is in. Does it need to be metal? Probably not. The plastic will work. I guess the proof will be how long does it last? It Will it break or will it be okay? I mean, it's very, it's very lightweight, so I, I don't see it being too much of an issue. So in here, this is where they've got more foam, is the bill plate. If you saw my review on the Mars, you'll notice that I have an issue with anodized bill plates. So Anycubic originally had a build plate that was anodized on the bottom like this. And with this one, surprisingly or not surprisingly, I should say, is it's actually bare aluminium. Now we know that bare aluminium gives a lot better adhesion, so that's definitely a bonus. Some filters for putting the resin back into the bottle. And of course, the vat. Now this is where the resin goes. Let's have a quick look at the printer. So the size of the printer is 230 by 200 by 400. That's the actual printer size. The printing volume is 115 by 65 by 165 mils. It uses a 405 nanometer sensitive resin, which is exactly what the Monocure resin is. It's rated at 50 watts, so it's a little bit more powerful than the original Photon, which I believe was 25. The printing speed is 20 millimeters per hour. Layer resolution is 25 to 100 micron. The Y axis resolution is 1.25 micron. The XY dots per inch is 47 micron. The light source is a UV integrated light with a wavelength of 405 and the printing technology is a UV based SLA 3D printer, also known as the MSLA, which is mass stereolithic. A couple of things we notice is different about this one to the original one is the Z axis dual linear rail. Now that's gonna help with any sort of Z wobble. I think that's a really good inclusion. For a low cost printer, uh, such as this one. I think this was around the $600 Australian. It has these two white boxes here. They have carbon filters in there to help with the smell of the resin. The original one didn't work very well, in my opinion. So we'll see how these, this one works. And then everything else is pretty well standard. You've got a little LCD touch screen there. We have the power button, the USB, which is on the side. It's not on the front. On the front, I think it's always nice. It makes it easier to access, but on the side here is not too bad. It's better than the back. And the back, we'll just spin it around. It's just the power connector and a fan. So let's get it powered up. Let's plug that into there. Power it on. And then it all should light up. Let's run through the menu here. First thing, is print. Now because there's no USB, there's nothing to print. The next one is system. So this is where you can change the language. So you press language and it goes from Chinese, you press it in and it goes to English. Just remember it's a top one if you do what I just did. Uh, service just talks about the web address, that's a bit strange. Info and it just shows you information about the firmware and the printer ID and things. So that's pretty useless to be honest. Tools, so you've got your move, so that's the obviously being able to move the Z up and down, we'll have a look at that while we're here. This is the Z axis where the build plate goes, we need to move it up. We can select by how much. If you had the build plate in place here, be very careful not to put it down because you will break or potentially break the LCD screen. We press it up here. And just be careful here because if you do press it too many times and it goes up too high, it could damage it. Here we have the 
detection. So I think that shows you whether the light is working. So let's take the vat out and have a look at that. And you can select what shape that you want. So let's start with the first one. Then you hit the, it says here 6S, which is for six seconds. So you can change that. So let's say we want it for 10 seconds. Then we hit the next button. And then you can see here that that's lit up in that shape and it should go for 10 seconds. And that's showing you that the light's working and the screen's doing its job and everything's working as it should. This here will be setting the Z axis to zero. Let's just get the VAT back in place. Oh, that probably needs a little wipe with some IPA. The bill plate needs to be leveled. I mean, they say they level these in the factory, but it's always good to level it. So you can see here, you have this little grub screw at the top. By loosening that, it will allow the bill plate to be loose within here. And then we put it on here. We take out this tool here, which is an Allen key. We come in here like this, and we just loosen that off. After doing that, you should notice that that there is flopping around. The next thing they say to do on this particular printer, which I would normally not do, but the way this printer works, it doesn't have work on the sensor like the Elegoo Mars and some of the others uh, work. It actually works by setting up the Z4 home. So you need to actually take the build plate down to a level and then say, this is a level that I want to call home. So I guess it's good in a way that you have the flexibility to be able to do that, whereas the others rely on the sensor. The sensor in this case is there to stop the build plate crashing into the LCD. It actually doesn't work out the home. You need to do that manually. With that loose, we need to get a piece of paper. I'm just going to cut on here around the actual that itself to give me the right size. So this bit of paper, what it's doing, it's replicating the thickness of this FET film. And I said before, I don't really like using paper because there are different thickness of FET films. So the film that it comes with is 0.15 to 0.2 millimeters in thickness. That must be similar to the paper and the reason why they want you to use paper. Whereas you can get different thicknesses of FET. We sell one, uh, 0.1 and 0.2. So if you have one of them handy, you're probably better off using the actual FEP sheet you're going to use rather than the bit of paper. And that's going to give you the absolute right thickness. So now we need to get it down into the home position. So we press this little button here that looks like a house. Now that'll take it right down to the bottom. Once it gets down there, we can slip our bit of paper in and the automatic sensor is doing its job. It's not crunching it down. But you can still see there that it's flopping around. There's certainly no resistance on the paper. We go to the point one button and we go down. And I can just very faintly hear the build plate going down just point 0.1 mil at a time, which is obviously very slow, but that's good because we don't want it to crash into the LCD screen. According to the instructions, it says that you should be able to pull it, but not push it which I kind of feel it is there now. I'm pulling it, I'm not pushing it. Let's get our Allen key again, straighten this up and do it up. That's good, we can take the paper out now. Go back to the other menu and go to Z equals zero. Now here it says enter and return. Return actually in this case means go back. So we need to use the enter button and it's done. So now the printer is seeing that position as the home position. So when it goes to do the print, it's gonna go down to that level and it's gonna print from there. So we go back to the move and go back to 10 and we go back up. So we're gonna go back up now so we can fit the vat. Don't make the mistake I did and press the home button thinking that it's gonna go back to that position that you just set. It actually goes to the sensor default home, which is just above the LCD screen. To get to the home that we set, the only way to really see that, as far as I can understand or see, is by actually putting a print on. Now there is a print on this USB stick. The preloaded test print was set up for the resin that came with the printer, the AnyCubic resin. To get it to work with the Monocure resin, we need to upload the software, the AnyCubic software, and change a couple of the settings. It's really simple, let me show you how. So now I've got the USB stick from AnyCubic that came with it. Let's have a quick look at the software that came with it. It looks like you've got the manuals there. So let's just click around here and see Mac. There you go, so Photon Workshop. So we'll double click on that. So I'm just gonna put this into my applications folder and there it is there. 
so we've got the software loaded. What we're going to do now is go to my favorite model to test any new printer, and that's the calibration matrix. So we hit the open, we select the model we're after, and we hit open. We have the slice settings. Now this is for the AnyCubic resin. I always like to go a couple of seconds higher than I think it's going to be, or at least a second higher to know that I'm going to get a print and much better to get something on the build plate than nothing. So let's change this setting to 10 seconds. Off time, I'll leave it one, that was at a fault. I don't believe that's right. It should be at around six and a half because usually the off time is how long it takes for the build plate to come up and down and start the print in between layers. I'll leave it at one just because it is their default. Bottom exposure time is 60, that's fine. Bottom layer that says three, let's make it four. Lift distance, six. Z lift speed, three. And the Z retract speed is three. I'm gonna leave that all as is. Now that there is obviously the support settings. We're not using supports for this, so we don't need to worry about that. And now up here, this little picture that looks like uh, three layers, that's a slice. We slice using those settings and we're gonna save it to the USB stick. Okay, so it pops up here saying the estimated total print time is approximately 38 minutes. You can do a preview at this point and it's going to show you actual preview of what it's sliced. Let's take the file now out and let's put it in the printer. These need to be done up so it's nice and snug in there. We're about to handle resin. First things we need to do is put the gloves on. Always need to wear gloves when you're handling resin. Shaking the resin, this is a half litre bottle of Monocure 3D Rapid Grey. Give it a good shake. We undo it, the safety seal will crack. Get that, you'll see the next safety seal, which is under here, the induction seal. So I'm just gonna bring it up just enough to cover, probably, that's probably about a quarter full. We can close the lid now. We go to print, we navigate to our file, there it is there, and we click play. Now all going well, build plate's going down into the resin. You can see here, that's the first layer it's printing, that'll be the bottom layer. Let it do its thing and we'll come back and we'll check it. The print's finished now, so let's have a look how we did. Good news is that there's something on the build plate. That's always a good sign to see. It's hard to tell at this stage because obviously there's resin over it. Let's take it off the build plate using a scraper. As normal, just uh, it's got relatively good adhesion. Happy with that. Just take it off there. We'll get this print cleaned up. You can see straight away that it's overcured, and it's overcured by a number of seconds. What is overexposure? I guess the best way to explain it is the same way a stills camera gets overexposed. So if the aperture is open for too long, too much light comes into the camera and the picture is blown out. Exactly the same thing happens with a 3D resin printer. If you expose for too long, rather than it being white or blown out, the objects are bigger than they should be. So in this case, the Monocure 3D has no detail. And the whole point of resin printing is for high detail. It's a matter of getting the balance right between the layer heights and the duration that you print for. So let's put it on for uh, seven seconds per layer at 50 microns, and let's see how it looks. So we started off with 10 seconds. You saw the results for that. We went down to seven. Let's have a look how that turned out. Again, it's overexposed. You can see that the Monocure 3D, the lettering there is quite filled in. There's very low detail on a lot of parts of this model. It needs less exposure. So then we went to five seconds, a lot better, less uh, filling in of the Monocure 3D. The bar that goes across is a lot less thick and has more detail. But again, we thought that we could even try and go lower, so we pushed it and we went down to three and a half seconds. Now, I didn't think that this would actually print, but it did, it printed well. And to be honest, I reckon three seconds there would probably be okay. So three seconds uh, layer time for this printer is impressive. It must be due to the stronger lead array uh, in this printer compared to the original Photon, which was a 10 to 11 seconds with our gray resin. So three seconds, it's, it's a big time saver. That's considerable when you're printing for 20 odd hours and you can save that many seconds per layer, that really, really is gonna save you a lot of time. For speed compared to the old one, I mean, I know people say that there's not a lot of difference between this and the old one, it's more cosmetic. 
well, that's a pretty big difference. Okay guys, there you have it, the Photon S. We got down to three and a half seconds layers, a little bit of time to dial it in. All the settings will be in the description. We'll also include a coupon code down there as well to get 25% off the resin. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.